everyone. We are live at 5. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we have a really great guest today. John Magaro. John okay. Magaro. He's in Illyria. He's playing Joe Papp in the off-Broadway smash Illyria at the Public Theater, uh, which everyone's talking about. It's yeah. Not, I mean, it's such a cool... Playing Joe Papp at the Public. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> that's a big, that's a big yeah. task. That's a big deal. So uh, we're going to get to him. So well, we first, are. we have some big, big Broadway opening tonight. Yeah, we have an opening night. On the Broadway. It's kind of a, I mean, it's like okay, a concert. Okay, this is like a, yeah. It's, it's like a, a concert. Con it's, it's a not concert. like, you know. It's called Home for the Holidays. And so this is, this good is work, it. Good camera you. work there. You're I welcome. saw you did. You're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so this is uh, Jonathan Tessero's show. Mm -hmm. Started previews just a few days ago on November 17th at the August Wilson Theater. It's kind of like a, a late It's a concert. Entry. I wonder if they've been rewriting the script a lot during previews. There's, it's not a concert, really. but it's got, s okay, let me explain it to you because... You, you need this. We all need this. It's, it's headlined by a lot of people I don't know. So Reality Bianca TV Ryan, I'm not a, yeah, who won America's Got Talent season one. Okay. Josh Kaufman, winner of The Voice season six. And Candace Glover, who won American Idol season 12. I'm sure you watched that season. So it has, you know, I didn't realize songs. they were all the winners. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they're okay. winners. Oh, Come All Ye Faithful, Oh, Holy Night, you know, Christmas, Christmas songs, Christmas songs. But the surprise, the surprise exciting is element to it this. has narration from Bachelorette season 11 star, Caitlin Bristow. She's and the host. She wears pretty gowns. She wears pretty gowns she, and yeah. narrates. And then also features Danny Aiello offering stories and songs. D doing scene work and song. I don't apparently. know, but I love Danny Aiello. He's that's a nice amazing. Person. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what we have. YouTube stars plays a limited engagement through December 30th. It's Quick holiday hit. YouTube stars? Yeah. You know, YouTube stars. Live or are they going to show video of I them? do not have that information at this time. Uh, anyway, it's at the anyway, August Wilson Theater. Break a leg. It's home keeping for the, the August Wilson Theater warm. For Mean Girls. For Mean Girls, which is coming in 2018. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Pretty Woman, another big Broadway event coming up. The, the, we now know which theater Pretty Woman will play at. It'll be at the Nederlander Theater. Which is on for which I just thought of something funny about this. Forty first Street vacated by war paint. Yeah, vacated by war paint. But you remember, remember when below forty seven that area was very. What what used to be in that area? Rent. Prostitutes. Oh. And now we have Pretty Woman. Okay. Well, the yeah. The musical version of the movie you all love, Julia oh, Robert. I get it. Oh, I get the. Yeah. Sorry. I'm Good just job. saying. It's well, like a, a it was slow. like a dirty block it's right near Port Authority. Right. Yeah, she's it's right near Port Authority. It's not that dirty anymore. Um, Anyway, it will start July 20th, 2018. Opening night is August 16th, 2018. And of course, it's playing Chicago First, the Oriental Theater, starting March 13th. Uh, Samantha Barks, Steve Kazee, Orfe, Eric Anderson, Jason Danieli, and one of the best names in show business, Kingsley Legs. Also one of the best voices. I love, I love that name. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it's based on the movie you love. Jerry Mitchell is a director choreographer, which will mean it's going to have great dancing. And it's going to be a big Broadway musical. So and yeah. Brian Adams is doing the score. Oh yeah, of course, Brian Adams. Big yeah. deal, big deal. It's his Broadway debut, so it's interesting. And Gary Marshall was like, you know, behind getting this musical started, the original, the director, the late Gary Marshall. So it's going to be interesting. Can't wait yeah. to see it. Good stuff. Okay, I have some sad news. Earl Hyman has died. Earl Hyman. He was a Tony nominee, but you probably know him as Bill Cosby's dad from The Cosby Show. And he was also an Emmy nominee. He was 91. He died on November 17th. But I didn't know he had so many Broadway credits and so many classic roles. He played Hamlet. He played King Lear. He played Macbeth. Isn't that amazing? I saw him in Driving Miss Daisy off Broadway. He, play, he played <laughs> Hoke in Driving Miss Daisy off Broadway. Also Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah, also the Master Master. Builder, St. Joan. And he is in the Theater Hall of Fame. And he was inducted in 1997. So sad news about that, right. but important news. Uh, the Preacher's Wife. You, you probably never saw that movie, huh? The Preacher's Wife. It was like you know a me well. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> it was a remake of The Bishop's Wife, right? I think. And it, and it oh, was a Whitney Houston person. movie. And Titus Burgess is working on a stage adaptation of And he this. wrote the score. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. It's really like a, a labor of love. Like He kind of was like, I want to do this and got the rights and has been working on it. There will be a big industry reading December 11th, and um, it's being directed by Michael Arden, who is, of course, in previews for Once on this Island. Yeah. And I guess the minute that Once on this Island opens, he's going to go and get this reading put, pulled together. Uh, Ladisi is playing the lead. Ladisi is not... She's kind of like a... Um, she was started in the theater world, but she immediately got a record deal, and she's been doing very well, very well on the charts. So she's never really done a big. I remember she was in that hair concert. Remember the hair concert? Oh yeah. She was in that. Huh. 
Uh, anyway, she'll be playing Julia, the role made famous by Whitney Houston in the film, which is from 1996. Loretta Devine will play her mother. We love Loretta, Loretta Devine, original dream girl. And also Quentin Earl Darrington, who was in What's in this Island. Donald Weber, Alan Green, uh, Jeanne Harrell, Ab Abba, oh my God, I'm going to mess up these names, Beth. I'm sorry, but Abba I mean, Baugh, Silver, <laughs> Clifton Davis, Jerry McIntyre, Q Smith, and Ashley Jenkins are all in it. And it's going to be a big reading. And then maybe it'll come to Broadway. Right? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. I would like that. I'm okay, so tonight is the big Broadway debut of Noah Galvin and Dear Evan Hansen. So break a leg, Noah Galvin. Also, today. We have a feature. We have a feature. We have a feature on the site about it. You can yeah. see that. You yeah, can we have an interview. Catch with him. that and mm -hmm. hear all about his life. Also, there's a book out today called Through the Window. Yes. That's behind the scenes at Dear Evan Hansen. Also, if you watch the Will Rowland blog, he literally went through all of that. So you can check that out. Today, we have also on the site, we have Getting Cheeky, our. SpongeBob SquarePants. You're going to see it tonight. Our SpongeBob SquarePants vlog yeah. with Lily Cooper. Yeah. This is really adorable. I'm gonna suddenly get all the jokes about uh, all the references, like Bikini Bottom and all these things. I don't know. I don't know about. that you'll suddenly get it. Like you I, can't. I'm just, suddenly gonna we'll be see a part about of that. that. We'll see. But she, they wear onesies. They jam backstage. They're adorable and they're very talented. Also, we have opening night pictures from uh, the Wolves off Broadway Lincoln Center. New play cool. by Sarah Delap. Cool. I haven't seen that yet. You saw it. I saw it. Yeah. It's very and good. You like it? Yes. It's about soccer. It takes place on a soccer field. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, John Magaro. Maga John Magaro is here. Uh, that's how he told me to say it. That's because I asked. I want to yeah, make sure I'm pronouncing lot. it right. <laughs> anyway, he's in Illyria, and we're going to take a quick break, and he'll be right here. winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. you got to get up for Carol King, finding the top of the charts was easy. Finding her own voice was beautiful. Beautiful, the Carol King music. Hey everyone, we are back on Live at Five and I am joined by Mr. John Magaro, who is in Illyria. Hello, it's great to be here. Down I'm at the public. I like saying down at the public. Do the people public. know that it's on your thing, that we get to see it? Very am I revealing it? Very I'm just going to watch by the myself iPad. this whole time. You're right, you know, maybe we should I'm show just them gonna, this. Yeah, you can actually, see it. so you no, watch geez, with amazing. a delay, it's you can watch thing. the action. Oh, yeah. So it's Look very distracting that. to pay attention to, but this is what's I'm, happening. I'm easily um, distracted. This is where we get people's questions and things yeah. like that. I um, love it. So yes, thank you for um, revealing the magic of what happens on Live at Five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How, how's it going down there? This is, like, this is a really cool play. It's a cool project. It's a cool project to be a part of, especially as an actor. Um, Richard Nelson has done something very special. He's been doing something very special at the public for years now with the Apple yeah. plays and the yeah, Gabriels. Yeah. And it's fantastic to be a part of because he's kind of creating a new type of theater. Mm. Um, it's hypernaturalism. He uses the word verisimilitude quite a bit. Uh, it's okay. like the word of the day. If wow. it was Pee Wee Herman. We'd that's be, a good word. Yeah. Every time he says it, yeah, we can't run word. around. But uh, <laughs> it, it, no, but it's fantastic because it's you have. It's very frightening when you first approach it, uh -huh. but when you get into it, it's probably the most liberating form of mm. acting that I've done, uh, especially in the theater. So it's, it's fantastic. And he's directing his own play. He is. And um, this, I mean, we don't want to bury the lead. You, so this, I have, I have a, a visual. You're playing this guy. This is a very famous. Who's that guy? This is Joe Pat. I've never seen that guy before. Co-founder of the Public Theater. This is yeah, actually a Joe. photo of him in, I believe, 1954. 
And <laughs> no, no, that's not, not 1954. No, this well, is. This is. <laughs> who told you that? That's what I said online. Anyway, no, no. That, the but, play but, takes but, but, place. This is so he started obviously pre Shakespeare. But this is a great picture because um, so this picture here. So our play takes place in 57, 58. So this is a few years before this. That's when he's trying to get 1958. Shakespeare. Yeah, when he's trying right. to get Shakespeare in the park off the ground, right. they're struggling. Yeah. But this, as you can see from this, public theater under construction. So this was taken while they were building the public see, theater. See, I love how, because it wasn't a theater originally. It was a group, it was, he, he was doing it in the park. In the park, right. and they would do you know little shows. At, Fighting with the parks department. Parks department, and they did show at a church or at right. a you know, thing like that. And then he fought and got the public too. So. I love that you're now an expert on all I'm Joe Pap yeah, things. So Joe you could Pap probably, nerd. I could have just, we could have had a game where I could have pulled out like 10 different photos. You would have told me exactly terrible. which year yeah, every that's, photo. That's probably every, true. <laughs> that's probably true. So are there photos of him at the time of the play takes place? There's not many. There's not many, There's yeah. a couple in um, the book Free For All. You know, all these guys in this play, I think, wrote a book, like Merle Debusky, Bernie <laughs> Gers. Uh, yeah, Bernie Gers. And they all wrote a book. Colin Stuart Gerst Vaughan. is also in it, right? Yeah, they yeah. all wrote books. And you, that's where you can find some pictures from the 50s okay, of yeah. them. There's a great picture of Bernie and Joe uh, in L.A., I think, and they're wearing these, like, silly hats <laughs> and being really goofy because seeing Joe Pat being goofy is... I don't think a lot of people got to see right. that, you know? Right? Yeah, but he's pretty he, severe personality. Well, yeah, he's like, a, exactly. And he's yeah. such a father of the theater we love. Right, right. And so we think of him in very serious terms. Yes, right. But I guess the point of this play is to sort of see the guy, right? I think it's kind of, you know, I think, yes, there's a, a, a demystification of yeah. him. Um, I think you'll talk to a lot of people who didn't know him, and, and now he has this sort of mythical status, and not a lot of people really knew the real Joe Papp, mm -hmm. especially the Joe Papp in 1957, which was a very different guy than uh, the guy in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. You know, he came a long way. Um, but at the end of the day, Richard really wasn't trying to tell, you know, a, a biopic. Right. Like a, an right. A, it, it's sort of a fictional account. Yeah. Um, and really, at the end, of the end of the day, it's about young artists struggling, trying to make it, pulling each other up. Through their mm -hmm. their trials and their and their struggles, a and um, hopefully it inspires young actors and uh, producers, directors, writers, blah blah blah, to to uh, not give up on these dreams, mm -hmm. even if they're you know very hard to keep. So keep is going. there a uh, is is that true? Do you do you find as an actor have you can you kind of relate to the oh god the yes. energy of it? Oh god, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. We would constantly have discussions. Everyone in the cast would have discussions about, you know, when you first came to New York or you were in college and you had a group of friends and you sort of like were piecing together a little, you know, we'll do a reading here yeah. and we'll do and we'll try and make a theater company or we'll try and make an improv troupe or this thing and and then life life takes place and one guy goes off this way and this guy goes mm -hmm. off that right. way and you feel a little betrayals or whatever but but at the end of the day it's still your family and you and you want the best for them but. You know, I, I mean, there's so many of us in this town who have had the fight to, to yeah. keep going, yeah. you know. Yeah. You, you've actually, you've done a lot of film and TV. Yeah. And you've done some theater. You were in the yeah. front page. I was. You were part of that oh amazing, Broadway amazing, debut. amazing cast. Broadway debut. Yeah. What a great way to have your debut. It's fantastic. You had a great, great mustache, didn't you? I did. I, was it a great yeah. mustache? It was great. I, I thought, thought it was a great. mediocre mustache. No, no, no. I thought it was great. But I'll take that the, compliment. You, nailed, you look good in the period. Oh, thank you. You do a lot of period things, actually. Yeah, I don't right? know. I'm just, I just, my god, all, you know. It's about yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> right. Whatever. They put you in period things. They put me in period things. Right? Yeah, they do. Was, so how was it getting cast in this? Did you know Richard Nelson? or? I didn't know Richard, but I did a workshop for the public with Richard about a year ago when I was doing Front Page. Mm -hmm. And I went in and we worked a day on the, the show and we did a presentation for Oscar. And uh, about three months later, I got a call saying, you want to do this? And of course, of course. But then I spent the rest, so that was three months after. So I spent the entire summer in uh, anxiety and panic about <laughs> having to play Joe Papp at the public. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, how could you not? Right. Yeah. And so did you dig into all those books or is it important just to pay attention to the script in front of you? You know, Richard encouraged us not to. Okay. I did a little bit of research and, and cast members did, you know, different amounts of research. Mm -hmm. But Richard really wanted us to tell that story that he had written yeah. and for us to discover the relationships on our own. He didn't want it to be, you know, 
an exact history mm -hmm. or us trying to do imitations or anything like that. So he, he really discouraged that, actually. But um, being in New York and being around theater artists and, and, and people who work in this business, there are so many stories about Joe and these, these you yeah. know, this group of people yeah. that they're very happy to tell you. And having those kind of firsthand accounts, I almost found more valuable than reading mm -hmm. a book mm -hmm. about, you yeah. know, I I hearing the passion in their voice and, and the humor in their voice and telling these uh, accounts of Joe was invaluable. I mean, it was amazing. It's funny, just yeah. like two weeks ago, I interviewed Mercedes Rule, and she told me a Joe Papp story. Everyone has, I yeah, mean, you're right. everyone you're just, has a Joe Papp story. I'm sure story. you've been getting them. Uh, you've been getting all of them. I've everybody. gotten all of them. <laughs> and a lot of them end with that someone being fired. <laughs> I will say that. A lot of them end with someone being fired. That's sort of the, the common thread in these stories. Well, yeah, you are playing sort of a, a darker side to this guy, too. I mean, yeah. it, it, I mean, he he is sort of a, a character. Well, you know, he... he, he I, I, I think he knew what he wanted, mm -hmm. and he was not going to be um, discouraged away from that or told he couldn't do it. Yep. Um, there's a great story about Joe Papp about, because he was, he was pretty religious Jew, even though he kept that hidden. I, I think someone told me his first wife hmm. didn't even know he was Jewish. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and he went by Papp, and there's a line in the play, I thought you were Greek. Uh -huh. And he's like, oh, and he didn't say it. But, but I, there's a story about Joe going to Yom Kippur services in Brooklyn. And yeah, you know, you have to have a ticket, you have to pay to get in, and his father couldn't afford it, and they turned mm. him away. And he thought that was, it was such a it was such a blow to him, mm. the idea that you couldn't pray without mm. having money. So I think that sort of was sort of a launching pad for him to have this whole idea is that of of theater should be free, it should be like the library, mm -hmm. his politics, which were pretty left. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it sent him down this road, and and that fight that darkness came from from being relentless and not giving up on that vision mm -hmm. yeah Richard and the the style you're talking about is it's kind of like you're eavesdropping that's sort yeah, of like the totally the, you guys are sort of it's very naturalistic the way you're interacting and yeah uh, you're not on a stage telling the story and no yeah. and it's not for everyone you know a lot of people have come in and and you know there's not there's not a lot of major blow up or dramatic events that happen in this it is people just sitting around and being people talking and uh, going back to Richard which I think is like in the vein of Chekhov or mm -hmm. you know it's very it's people living life in its most boring form and its most exciting form and its most sad and happy you know all, all that stuff but for a lot of uh traditional theater goers it's it's scary and i understand that the idea of change in theater can be a scary thing the idea in change of change in anything can be a scary mm -hmm. thing but i have to say to have the bravery to do that which richard has yeah. is inspiring mm -hmm. and 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 makes it you know such a thrill to be a part of have you had you seen a lot of theater at the public has it been a, not a, a lot i've seen like four or five shows at mm -hmm. the public um, all very different, and, and that's what's wonderful about the public. Yeah. I mean, we share a dressing room with, or a green room, with two other shows, Oedipus El Rey, which is a great show, yep. and Office uh, Hours, yeah. which is a great show, and then there's us. And you have three very different shows with very very different types of people. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, that has always been the vision of the public, yeah. and Oscar continues that today, and, and that's what keeps it exciting. And then on top of that, you have Shakespeare in the Park, so like, it's yeah. like, you know, very lucky to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Peyton wants to know, how does uh, art or shows you did in high school influence how you perceive theater now? Did Peyton go to high school with me? Is this like someone I went to high school with? Trying Maybe, to I don't know. Well, let's sometime. talk about your high, did you get involved in theater? I did, I did. Yeah? What'd you do, like how to succeed in business without I mean, really that's trying? How we did. So I grew up around Cleveland. And it was a little, not a little, but it was a big, one of those like factory public schools with like uh -huh. thousands of kids, right? So the only plays we really did there was a musical once a year, and then they did a senior class play and a junior class play. Okay. Um, yes, I did the musicals. I did. What did you do? I did Fiddler. I played Muttle. Nice. That's, did, a, that's a good role. I did Once Upon a Mattress. Uh -huh. I played the Jester. Oh, okay. And I did Barnum, and I played Barnum. That was my big oh, senior year. Like Barnum. Look, look, I can that was play your big a lead. Moment. Not my big. That moment. was the big. I moment. actually zip, still talking about. I zip lined in. What? In a high school play. <laughs> Can you believe that? It was, there, this was, you know, this is the 
this is like 2000, so there was no no safety regulations wow. at that point, especially in Ohio. <laughs> they were like, just throw a kid down a zip line. We don't need safety here. And I'm like I could have whatever, but I did that. But I also did plays in the community. I did like you know Cleveland Playhouse, Pork House Theater, uh -huh. things like that, and it all inspired me. But it wasn't until I went to college and I went to this little school called Point Park in Pittsburgh. A lot of mm -hmm. uh, dancers and singers on Broadway right now yeah. who came from that school. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tony Yazbek, mm -hmm. Point Park. Uh, a a anyway, there, having those four years of like this concentration and this conservatory atmosphere where I could read scripts and just immerse myself in mm -hmm. theater, that's where I really gained an appreciation and, and uh, a knowledge of you know theater. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, it was a good time. So yeah. You know, there's a rumor that in that new uh, The Greatest Showman movie that Hugh Jackman stole your zipline bit. Hey, he heard about it. Such a heard about thief. it. That's what he does. He's such a thief. Uh, when I see Jackman, he's going to get it from me. <laughs> Interesting question. Cassie asked, do you, did you have a moment in the rehearsal process that was like an aha moment? Is that a moment? Is that a thing? Like, do you have a... Aha uh -huh, Where it like clicks or... Where the light bulb goes off. Did this play kind of... Um, I had a lot of those. Yeah. With Richard, it's that's constant. I mean, it wasn't one, and we would be here for a day if I went through all of them. And I actually couldn't remember all of them, quite honestly. <laughs> right, right. But like, but like, uh, and there's it's just constant. With the way he works, you're constantly discovering new things mm -hmm. and and having those like, oh, this is how you do. Oh, this, uh, and then it just keeps going. Yeah, yeah. You have worked with a lot of um, like amazing film directors. I've been very lucky. Yeah, I mean, it's on. crazy. Is this wood? Uh, can we talk like about classic. the most glamorous one? You mean, uh, oh, I, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna answer the question you're for me. You're in Angelina Jolie's movie. Yeah. I mean, maybe she's not the one, maybe Woody Allen. No, was no. More. Was Woody <laughs> Allen more glamorous? He's glamorous. He's glamorous in his own <laughs> David right. David Chase. He's I mean, pretty glamorous. All... He came and saw the show the other night, by oh, yeah? the way. Yeah, he loved it. Yeah. Uh, a Angie, as we call her. Uh, what do you wanna know? I don't know, what was it like working with her? That was yeah. crazy. It was great. I mean, I really enjoy working with actor directors. I find it a lot of fun hmm. because you have a, a common language with mm -hmm. them. Um, and that was right there with her. Um, that was hard in a different sense because we were all starving. So we were shooting oh, in you, Australia. Because you had to look like you we were starving. We had to look like we were like POW. Because right, you were like on the water. Like, well, I wasn't on the water. I was in the prisoner camps, in the right. camps. Oh my God, everybody, which, everybody in that. It was yeah. just a bunch of starving so you, guys. So there was no craft services, or there was, and all the uh, you know, like the the Japanese uh, guards could eat that, and they had, had these amazing lunch. The food <laughs> down there was amazing, much better than the sets here. And we would just sit there eating our little piece of white fish and spinach, <laughs> boiled spinach, and just eating that, looking at them miserable and. And I complained a lot. We all complained a lot on that job. <laughs> to Which, Angelina Jolie? Directly? No, no, to like a, 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 anyone, to each other. But like, no, she was fantastic. She's really so sweet. And 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 uh, did you see her new movie? Which one? Uh, they first they killed my father. No, I haven't seen fantastic. it. Fantastic, you should see it. Yeah. She's she's really. I mean, she she's got a. She's a real director. She's a real director, yeah. and she's got a great point of view and, and a, a good eye for these. Huge stories that need to be told. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I randomly liked? The finest hours. That was a good. Did movie. you? That, that was a, a tough movie. one too. So I'm, now I'm just complaining about all my jobs. <laughs> this is perfect. People this, should see that movie. No, but I don't, know, all my get, friends know I'm a complainer. It didn't get much of an audience, but it, it, I really liked it. It's a great. It's actually, it actually came out really good. And Craig yeah. Gillespie has a great movie out. The director of that, I Tanya. You uh -huh. should see that about Tanya Harding. Look at you. I love. Oh, oh, that, oh, that's. I know that's that was Craig. The same director. Craig did that. Oh wow. But that movie was hard. We were in Boston, in this stage. It was. Freezing cold. We were soaking wet in water. Yeah, and you some were, guy almost got hypothermia. You were Italian in that? Were you? What were you? You, no, were, no. you were period. I mean, you, I know was, you were period. No, I was a guy. I was a a, a, a Polish guy. Or is he oh, Polish from yeah. Wisconsin? Okay. Was okay. Bern, okay. Yeah, Maskey, yeah, yeah. Irvin Maskey. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was like yeah. a whole thing. You do the, the period. Thing. You do the period thing really well. Oh, thank you. It'd be so I weird like if somebody. Period. It's fun. Like, playing yeah, period. like yeah. nobody would cast you as like a guy walking down the street in 2017. Or in the future, I would love to do something in the future, but I guess people like me don't exist in the future. <laughs> it's pretty sad. <laughs> There will be no one like you in the I guess future. not. I'm, I'm going extinct. So apparently. what's your dream? What's your uh, dream scenario? Like, what do you want to, what's, what's your uh, What's your career goal? You've done a lot. I mean, it's interesting. And you're like dipping working. your toes into more theater, which we like. Mm -hmm. But like, what, what? I don't know, what's your like ideal thing? I, I, it's hard to say. I mean, keep working. Yeah, That's keep kind working. of it. Like, keep working and work on things that I love. Like, being part, uh, 
you know, all the things you've named, uh, finest out, all those yeah. um, unbroken, um, this uh, front page, they've all been such wonderful experiences. Yeah. And working with these kinds of people and telling exciting stories and, and getting to play fun, interesting characters, complicated characters like mm -hmm. Joe Papp. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of it. And then all the other stuff that would maybe come with that is just the you know gravy or uh, you know the extra. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this is a dream. You know, so many of us struggle like like these guys in Illyria. They're struggling to get to the point that they got to eventually. Yeah. And you know, I came here and uh, struggled for years to get in stuff, and then it starts to work, and you get some breaks, and and I mean, I, every day is is really. I remember how fortunate I've been. So, so continuing to do good work mm -hmm. and getting to play exciting characters and exciting pieces, that's kind of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, Alaria is playing what? Through December 10th? It December got extended. December 10th, yes. Yeah, it's December extended. Down. And also, isn't there like, oh, don't think about free tickets. Isn't there some sort of like, yeah. very Joe Papp? Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, and Richard w wanted to do all free, but they couldn't get enough money right. together to do right. that. But there are 50 free tickets available every day of the show. I think there are more at Today Ticks that you can get as well. Um, but I I guarantee you, if you show up at that theater, you will get a free ticket. Because I, I think a lot of people don't realize, I think they think it's gonna be like Shakespeare in the Park. Like right. You have to show up at like right. nine in the morning right. or something. And what time do they actually start giving If you out? show up at seven o'clock, okay. you'll probably All be right. able to get a ticket. Yeah. Do it a couple days in a row. You'll get a ticket. Yeah, grab a bite around there. Yeah, you know. probably. You go to the library. They have a, a get I mean, a it's drink. The it's beautiful. Get a drink before the show. Trust me. Get a drink. Really? No, I'm <laughs> you don't have to get. It. Um, I feel like maybe Richard could turn this into like a Netflix series. Well, you know, it's interesting. Feels so, like it'd be cool to be like a series about theater people in the fifties. Well, because you know, with the Apple plays, he turned it into a three-part series. Yeah. And, and I think now he's. We'll see what happens. But I think he. People have been asking him that, so yeah, he's, cool. he's sort of tossing the idea okay. around. We'll see. Right. We'll Would see you be that. up for that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, why not? Yeah, why not? Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping this by. This is great. This is Thank great. You. Thank uh, you. Illyria is playing through December yeah. 10th at the Public Theater. And this is our last Live at Five before Thanksgiving. What are you going to do for Happy Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. Do you have a I'm show? Going, no, we don't. I'm going yeah. to my brother's. He lives uh, on the east side. So I guess I like my family. Like who My brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going yeah. there. I'm going to have a uh, little ravioli, a little uh, <laughs> spongili. Well, I hope all of you and I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. We'll be back on Monday with another great guest on Live at Five. Thanks for watching.